بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ابناء الطلاب وزملاء اطباء الدراسات العليا ان اقدم لكم هذه الافلام التعليميه التي تتناول الجانب العملي لماده التشريح فنشاهد الان هذا الشريط على امل ان يحقق الفائده المرجوه منه مع تمنياتي لكم بالتوفيق يقول الله تعالى وقل اعملوا فسيرى الله عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنين صدق الله العظيم. It is forming of the two hip bones and the sacrum. It is divided into a greater pelvis above and a lesser pelvis below. The vessel of two pelvis has an inlet, a cavity, and out. This is the pelvic inlet or pelvic brim. It is bounded by the promontory of the sacrum posteriorly and by the linear terminalis on each side and in front. The linear terminalis consists of the anterior border of the area of the sacrum the outweight line of the ilium, the piston pubis, and the pubic crest. The genitals of the pelvic inlet are first, the antero posterior or conjugate diameter. It is 11 cm and extends from the upper border of the symphysis pubis to the middle of the sacral promontory. Second, the transverse diameter from side to side. It is 13 centimeters and is wider than the transverse diameter of the outlet, which is 11 centimeters. Finally, the oblique diameter. It is 12 centimeters and extends from the inupubic eminence of one side to the sacro-iliac joint of the opposite side. Fourthly, the diagonal conjugate diameter extends from the lower border of the sensus pubis to the sacral promontory. This diagonal conjugate diameter is the diameter that can be measured clinically through the vagina. Normally, the sacral promontory cannot be reached by the examining the fingers, but if so, the pelvis is regarded to be contracted and may result in difficult labor. This is the pelvic outlet. It is bounded posteriorly by the apex of the coccyx, anteriorly by the synthesis pubis, and on each side by the ischial tuberosities and the sacro tuberous ligaments. Its diameters are first, the antero posterior diameter extends from the tip of the coccyx to the inferior border of the sensus pubis. It is 13 cm, which is larger than that of the inlet. Second, the transverse diameter extends between the two ischial tuberosities. It is 11 cm and is less than that of the inlet. In holding the pelvis in the anatomical position, the anterior superior index spine and the pubic tubules should lie in the same vertical plane 
in this position, the pelvic surface of the twisted pubis looks upwards and backwards. The concavity of the sacrum looks downwards and forwards. The axis of the pelvic cavity passes from the inlet downwards and backwards, then downwards and slightly forwards. This axis represents the pelvic pathway within the pelvis. Note that the subpubic angle is wider in the female than in the male. In the female, it is 90 degrees and is like the angle between the thumb and index finger when abducted. Like in the male, the angle is 45 to 60 degrees and is like the angle between the abducted index and the middle fingers. The walls of the pelvis are formed of three layers which are first, osteofibrous layer formed by the bones, the sacro-tuberous ligament, and sacro-spinous ligament. And by the perineal membrane and the obturator membrane. The sacrosuperous ligament extends from the ischial tuberosity to the site of the sacrum. The sacrospinous ligament extends from the ischial spine to the adjoining parts of the side of the sacrum and side of the coccyx. The perineal membrane fills the gap between the sides of the pubic arch and the obturator membrane fills the obturator frame. All these constitute the components of the osteofibrous layer. The second layer is the muscular layer which comprises the pyrophobus muscle on the pelvic surface of the sacrum, the obturator internus muscle on the side of the lesser pelvis, the sphincter urethral muscle and the perineal muscles extending between the sides of the pubic arch. The greater eni and the coccygeous muscles form the floor of the pelvis and are pulled together with the pelvic diaphragm. All these muscles are covered on their inner surfaces by the pelvic fascia, which constitute the third layer of the pelvic wall. Now let us begin by the perineum. The perineum is the lower part of the pelvis below the pelvic floor. It is diamond shaped and is bounded anteriorly by the pubic symphysis, posteriorly by the coccyx, 
and on each side by the side of the pubic arch and with the sacral tuberous ligaments. The perineum is divided by an imaginary line which extends transversely from the ischial tuberosity of one side to that of the opposite side. This line divides the perineum into two regions or triangles. Anal region or anal triangle lies posterior and contains the anal canal in the midline and the two isculorectal fossae, one on each side. Second, the urogenital region or triangle lies anterior and contains the external genital organs and the superficial and deep perineal pouches. 